Hi everyone, it's Abby Guinness from Spring Harvest and I'm delighted to be joined today by the wonderful Pippa Kramer, MBE. Hi Pippa. Hi Abby. It's great to chat to you today. Thank you for being here and for your time. And we're going to hear all about how you got that MBE and a little bit more about what you're up to. So tell us a bit, first of all, about who you are, what's your background, where have you come from? Okay, well, yes, I'm Pippa. Um, uh, my background actually is I'm an occupational therapist by training. So I worked for many years in the NHS, um, specialising in sort of neuro rehab and care of the elderly. I loved my job as an OT. Um, I've always loved older people. I think that kind of goes right back to my grandparents. I had the most amazing grandparents, Abby. They really were wonderful. And I mm. just used to love sitting with them and hearing their stories and learning from them. And uh, I just think we've got so much to learn from our elders. Um, they've just been around the block quite a few more times than many of us. My role now, actually, I'm pastoral care and seniors minister at Holy Trinity Church in Claygate, which is, um, I think, the best job in the world. I feel very, very <laughs> honoured to have this job. Um, we have a fantastic team of pastoral assistants who uh, and we care uh, and support a lot of different people, all ages. Um, but uh, we perhaps have a bit of a focus as well on seniors. Mm. And we run a very large group called Connections, which we set up, I think it was about over 12 years ago now. And that's one of the largest groups now in the UK, mm. also church-based church groups for, for older people. So tell me, what are we, uh, what are we seeing in the makeup of the UK population at the moment? Well, um, I, research has shown that older adults um, are the fastest growing age demographic across the, the Western world. And I think there are, um, I think it's something like 12 million over 65s in the UK. And this wow. figure is set to rise. So, I mean, we're all living longer, aren't we? Which is wonderful. But actually, that does bring challenges as well. Uh, mm. You know, whether that's physical illness um you know bereavement I think when you obviously it stands to reason when you get older you may well lose a partner your your fam your um your circle of friends may shrink mm -hmm. so loneliness isolation can become quite a big thing loneliness and isolation has always been around you know before the pandemic during and 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 now and certainly that's something that we're seeing in our with our seniors that we support you know a lot now are anxious and mm -hmm. they've just got used to their own company because they had to shield at home for so mm -hmm. long so you know even the most extrovert of, of people will say things like um well oh, you know I'd rather not come Pippa you know I'm just I, I just feel happier in my own sitting room or mm -hmm. um you know they've just lost confidence and are feeling a bit more anxious you said that your group connections has been going over 12 years what how did it all take off it all took off. Um, I actually was I was asked to do a growing leaders course by CPAS, the Church Pastoral Aid Society. It was a wonderful course. And I do remember we were asked this question and it was very memorable for me. It was um, if you could be doing anything for the Lord in the next five years, I think it was with no limits. It was like it was going to happen. You know, it was, that was a given. Yeah. What would that be? And I thought so I, I knew exactly what I would love to be doing. And uh, so they said, just write it down. So I wrote straight away. I said, I would love to be involved in setting up a group within the church, somewhere safe and welcoming, um, love and care at its centre um, for older people that they could come to and just be known and loved, um, reducing loneliness and isolation, but more importantly, giving people the opportunity to discover who how amazing God is and how much he loves them and hear the gospel so that was mm. so I wrote that down and then they said to us just go away and pray for whatever it is you've written down so I did I mean I am a big prayer <laughs> so I really and I really thought I'm gonna really pray for this so I did I prayed and uh, yeah about a year year and a half ago uh, later our vicar at the time came up to me I think I was helping at an alpha course or something and he said oh, but you've got a bit of a heart for older people haven't you you know have you got any thoughts you know we I just get the sense maybe we should be doing more as a church and I just couldn't believe it. I said, yes <laughs> I said, yes I've got loads of ideas and anyway we met for coffee and uh long story short I then spent another nine months praying specifically for the Lord to be leading in terms of how 
this was meant to look. Yeah. Who to get on the team? I was absolutely very well. I knew I couldn't do this on my own. I knew I needed a, a team around me. Um, so I spent nine months having coffees and teas with people, asking um, them for their thoughts and ideas. And most of the best ideas have come from my team. Um, and it, it's just been a joy. Yeah. And so we set that's how we set connections up. I, I, absolutely saturated in prayer. So what does it what does it look like? I'm thinking for those uh, for those who are listening, thinking, yes, this is what I've been praying for, too. Um, what are some of the practicalities? You know, how did you, how does it get going and what does it look like? OK, well, it, it meets weekly. That's really important. And it, initially we started fortnightly and then people would say, oh, Pepper, I've got a hospital appointment or something happening next Tuesday could we not meet weekly because otherwise it's like a whole month yeah. so um that's really important for continuity because for a lot of people it's the only thing they might come out for mm -hmm. so it's really really important basically the welcome is absolutely key so there are lovely people on the door welcoming just so good to see you how have you been how was the cataract operation or you know just recognizing or acknowledging that maybe somebody's the anniversary of the husband's of them dying is coming up for example um uh we we have coffee and lovely homemade cakes but i mean it, you can do whatever is appropriate for your setting in terms of hospitality um we meet in our church building so the whole church is set up it's almost like a cafe with little small coffee tables chairs around them tablecloths and flowers they that just seems to it just suggests it well it just says you matter this is mm. worth in you know making it lovely for you we have lots of different activities happening all around the church so everything from mini hand massage which is very popular <laughs> chair, sure. chair exercises by the font um we have uh flowers perhaps or a hornby double train set going for the guys seem to really love that stamp collections, all sorts of different special interest tables. There's always a thought for the day. Short, um, a little gem of a Christian truth, not a mini sermon, because for mm. a lot of the people that come, they're not Christians or they they don't come to church yet. That's the prayer. And Connections is a lovely bridge into church. But yeah, so that's that's Connections. It's very, but it um, it is large now. We get well over 100 um, coming to Connections, but it it doesn't have to be it can be you know we started very small just with a couple mm. of helpers just listening coming alongside people and we mm. go out to we go out to care homes we have pop-up connections in care homes and in cafes so um because a lot of the people in the care homes that we're visiting can't get out to us and I just know that Jesus would go there wouldn't he so we <laughs> we go in there and that's that's just a privilege tell me a little bit about um what happened during the pandemic because you've you've already mentioned that it was you couldn't run the group anymore things had to change and I think this is perhaps how you ended up on the honors list so tell us a little bit about that yes well we well actually just going back a, a couple of months actually to the January in 2020 mm. I um I went away basically for a couple of days I went away for four days because I just knew I needed to pray more and spend time quietly away from the busyness of life about how we could we'd had lots of encouragement to share connections we'd run a conference and different things have been going on but and I thought right I'm gonna just pray and each time I sat down I'd be I thought right I'm gonna start to pray and then I would cry <laughs> and eat and I could probably cry now just talking about it because I and it was most extraordinary and I was thinking this is crazy I, I've come here to pray and all I can do is cry and I remember ringing Bring my mum actually and saying, oh, this is just crazy. All I can do is cry when I'm trying to pray. And she, I remember she said, she said to me, darling, just just go with it. So I thought, <laughs> oh, OK, I will. So I so I basically I prayed and I cried for four days for this generation. And I felt again, I felt prompted to write down what this big prayer was. And it was quite a big prayer, Abby. And I, I was mm. almost embarrassed to share it with people afterwards because it felt quite preposterous, really. It was um, it was for hundreds of thousands of older people to be given the opportunity to hear the gospel and discover how amazing our wonderful God is. And wow. I think it was the hundreds of thousands bit that I, I and it wasn't just in the UK; it was around the world actually. But so I just I I continued praying, and of course didn't realise that that was January. Then the March, it became clear that we were yeah 
about to um, go into the pandemic. And um, anyway, um, uh, long, long, long story short, um, Lambeth Palace actually got in touch and were suggesting a Zoom call because they knew we had a big seniors ministry in, in our church and said they were saying, um, but what are you doing with all your elderly people now? Because they're all being having to shield at home. How are you going to support them? Mm. So I so I basically said, yes, we will. We've set up a huge cascade of care, which involved all the helpers, all the teams, about 50 of them calling and supporting three or four or five people each mm. by phone, but also practically as well. And we we oh, we did um, doorstep visits and garden gatherings when we were allowed. I mean, thousands of goodie bags went out, um, practical pastoral support. Anyway, from that very first Zoom call, <laughs> I'll never forget it. This idea between myself and the wonderful Chris Russell, uh, Archbishop Justin, the um, advisor, um, this idea of creating a free phone line for people, older people or, or anyone who's housebound really around mm. the UK to be able to ring. Um, and, I, um, and we just said, you know, wouldn't it be amazing? They can't, I mean, there's over two and a half million older people that can't access online services. So they yeah. were just going to be completely marooned. So, but most people do have a phone. Mm. So anyway, five weeks of daily Zoom calls, bringing in other people such as the wonderful Faith in Later Life, the charity, mm -hmm. oh, wonderful charity. Um, we, and... Uh, fantastic sound engineer and different different people uh we created the daily hope which is a free phone line available 24 hours a day seven days a week all sorts of different options on it um everything from hymns we love which maybe i might speak about in a moment this gentle evangelistic series that that we've written but then also church services hymns chair exercises I was again noticing as we were doing our visits people were getting weaker and frailer mm. so they're not chair, moving much not moving they can't get out sleep reflections using bible verses to just help I don't know about you Abby I really struggled with my sleep during the pandemic um so all sorts of things and it's been extraordinary um 800,000 uh calls have been uh, made that's over 10 million minutes of call time so that prayer, that hundreds of thousands prayer, <laughs> yeah. like hundreds of thousands prayer, <laughs> is right. I mean, God is amazing, isn't he? He really, wow. really is. So yeah. Well, we will put all the links um, so that people can uh, click through into what has uh, piqued their interest and uh, and be resourced and equipped to um to reach out to reach out to this this wonderful precious generation as you've been talking about. Thank you for inspiring us. Um, and for sharing what you've done it's just uh wonderful to hear very moving and um yeah and inspiring and encouraging and I I feel like we can't I couldn't possibly close this moment without asking you to pray for us <laughs> as you're such a prayer and we've talked about we've talked about praying and um would you be willing just to pray for anyone who's uh, been with us and watching this and uh, and for us in the UK as we uh, reach out to our seniors oh thank you Abby I'd love to pray yes thank you Oh, dear Father, we just thank you so much. Um, well, we just thank you that you are so amazing and that you love us so, mm. so much. Oh, Father, we uh, what a privilege it is to know you and to love you back and to share your love, that amazing gift, with those around us. And Lord, we pray today for each one of us on this on this call I was going to say whatever it is podcast that you would meet with us just where we are we give you ourselves and we ask you Lord to fan um, that little spark of interest perhaps um, that need to pray for this very precious generation Lord um, some may be nearing the end of their lives and they need to hear the good news of Jesus there's an urgency and we pray, Father, by your Holy Spirit, that this um, this desire and this, this prayer would be answered for hundreds of thousands of older people in mm. the UK and around the world to get the opportunity to hear the good news of Jesus. Please, mm. Lord, come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you so much, Pippa, for sharing um, and inspiring us. And uh, we look forward to seeing the fruits of your work 